and functioning automatic moorings retracted all speeds available through ludicrous speed incredible machine this video essay is an addendum to a previous examination that i did about a week ago eh, or so after watching this you should check that one out as well it has more in-depth explanations of the various consoles and looks at the main bridges that we see in starfleet and their lethality with that out of the way, let's address a few things that came up in the other video, a couple of comments, and finish up Starfleet designs. Oh, and a side note, if this one does as well as the other one did, we'll look at the bridge layouts of other species, so just remember that. Before we get too far into it, let's discuss two arguments that I continue to see to this day. Oh, what you got? You got anything? The main contention is that windows are inefficient during combat and most other operations, that you aren't able to see far enough out to make any real impact. However, this falls short for a myriad of reasons, both in the real world and the Starfleet universe. While indeed most submarines don't have windows, something some people think is a slam dunk for this argument, a lot of submersibles actually do. Additionally, most every other vessel that is used in militaries across the world also utilize windows. The same goes for airplanes and fighter jets. All of this tech is made right now as you're watching the video, and the use of windows could be considered obsolete, and yet our militaries still do it. And I'm even going to argue that the first country to find a way to make a metal with the properties of glass that still has a similar resistance as metal does probably would start to redesign all of their hardware, including the submarines. Looking at the other objection, the fact that the battles, in theory, occur across star systems doesn't mean that you wouldn't still have windows. There are a lot of other events that would require their use. The ability to see where you are going when navigation is out, when fighting an enemy that is actually next to you, or just being able to position yourself with another foreign body seems like a viable reason to have them. Even if we assume that this is only 1% of the time across all of Starfleet that you would need to do this, you lose nothing by having the windows. Additionally, it could be utilized to visually observe scientific phenomena. You know, the entire reason Starfleet is supposed to exist. That doesn't even mention that the windows do the exact same thing that the view screens do, that you can command them to look as close as a view screen can. And, just to note it, in the Star Trek universe, ships fight right next to each other, and so a window is a good idea. Regardless of whether you think they should in-universe or not, they do. It doesn't matter that it's done for the audience or for filming. In-universe, ships fight right next to each other. Note in ship's log that at this start time, I'm transferring command to the battle bridge. The second thing that seems to confuse people is the existence of a CIC or Combat Information Center. While I feel like I do delineate what I meant in the previous essay, I don't think I did it well because no one seems to understand. Let me be clearer. When I said CIC, I meant combat information center as we see it in the real world. It can also be known as an action information center. The CIC is a room located in a warship that functions as a tactical center and provides processed information for command and control of the near battle space or area of operations. This is a manned location that secondary officers work, and it also has the ability to take over if the bridge is compromised. While the Constitution class was shown to have something similar to this, most, if not all, other vessels in the 22nd, 23rd, and 24th centuries do not. The Battle Bridge on a Galaxy-class ship is a backup bridge for saucer separations. It is not manned unless the main crew vacates to it. There is no secondary place of operation that we see. There is no CIC on a galaxy class. That said, as mentioned before, I do think the Constitution had Starfleet's version of a CIC, though it wasn't exactly the same. And so, we now have a better explanation of the windows, as well as I've explained what a CIC is. Let's look at all of the other bridge designs. This is the USS Franklin, sir. Can you believe it? First Earth ship capable of what four went missing in the Gagarin radiation belt in the early 2160s. I remember that from the Academy, Captain Balthazar Edison. 
the first heroes of Starfleet. Depending on who you ask, the bridge layout of the Freedom Class vessel may not be considered a part of the main continuity, not in the Prime timeline. From what I can see, the ship was designed before the changes that occurred by the Kelvin event. While it is possible for a temporal event to impact the past before it even occurs, there's no reason to believe that this actually happened. Everything I can tell points to the fact that probably in the Prime timeline, the Freedom Bridge layout exists. That said, we don't have a lot of information on the bridge or its design. The captain sits in the middle with both con and navigation on either side of him in front. Behind him, to the right or left, is both engineering and tactical. Operations is also either behind him or possibly a part of navigation. The layout is pretty poorly done in my opinion. While the captain is in the middle and can both see and communicate with navigation and con, the two stations literally directly behind him make it very hard for them to understand what the other is saying. This would mean giving orders or hearing what is happening, especially during stressful events, would be very difficult. It's important to know that the layout is on a ship that was utilized by the Makos, the branch of the United Earth that actually claimed it was a military arm. So the ship Ship, presumably, was used for defense and offensive purposes. So why they would do this design is beyond me, but it does kind of make sense why Starfleet might not want to bring all of the Makos on board. The last piece of this is the obvious window that exists within the ship design itself versus that of a view screen. And what happens in the movie shows why you probably want windows, even if it's kind of remote and we'll never see this happen again. Report. Still out of visual range. 20 seconds. Alert Captain Rome out of Starfleet Science. Polarize the view screen. Whatever this is. Speaking of the Kelvin, I have to admit when I look at it, I really do like the design. The design of the bridge, nothing else, nothing else makes sense, but the bridge. I like. Again, the official documentation for it doesn't exactly exist, but from what I can tell, you have the captain's chair in the middle with its own command and control function. Immediately in front of him, to the left and right, you have both science and tactical, and these two officers do have their back turned to him, true, but it's close enough that the captain can see what is going on and communicate effectively. In front of the captain's chair and these two stations, you have con and navigation. Science is to his left with communications to the back left. Again, I'm not sure why communication communications would be behind them, as tense situations would make it so he has to turn to talk, but overall, the layout makes sense. Additionally, consoles line the bulkheads and surround the bridge, save for the window right in front of it. This style does feel militaristic and just efficient. Execute standard orbital approach. Standard orbit, I sir. Communications. Send a coded message for Starfleet Commander, Priority One. But looking at something that isn't efficient, the Oberth Bridge layout is probably the best and worst of Starfleet. A ship that is quite truly a science vessel, the design of its bridge is not militaristic, nor is it efficient, but it is reflective of what the ship was designed for. Like most vessels, the bridge is on deck one connected to the saucer section. You have the captain's chair in the middle with navigation and con in front of him on either side. In front of all three is the view screen. From everything we can tell, science is is presumably to his left, and tactical and communications are somewhere, though it's never completely delineated which console does what. Which, honestly, you can tell it is not a priority, as the weapon systems of the vessel are paltry. There is additionally an emergency hatch built into the bridge module because that makes a ton of sense. I mean, why wouldn't you have an emergency hatch on a module that is never meant for anything but space? It never meant to go into the atmosphere of a planet. I just, why not? This does lead us into the workhorse and pride of the fleet though. Let's be friends. Slowing to one half impulse power. The Miranda class bridge is possibly one of the more iconic arrangements given the battle between Khan and Kirk. The Miranda standard bridge has the captain's chair in the middle with the view screen directly in front of everyone. Like the Constitution, both navigation and helm are connected via a command console that is set just a meter or so in front of the captain's chair. To the left of the chair and behind him sits the tactical station as well as what Memory Alpha calls the quote-unquote master situation station. To the right of the captain is science 
advancing communications. There are other consoles that line the wall that can be used for varying situations and operations. The Miranda, kind of like everything in the 22nd century, makes a lot more sense for what Starfleet was really meant to be. The ship is designed to be able to do well in combat as well as any kind of scientific purposes. All of the bridge stations make a lot of sense, they're close to the captain, and they all interact. This very efficient design would be, I guess, updated to reflect bridges similar to that of the Galaxy class. The downgrade would have the captain's chair in the middle with navigation operations split, like observed on a Galaxy class starship. Similar to that of a crossfield, operations and tactical are now behind and to the left and right of the captain. The back of the bridge is lined with consoles that have various functions, including science and other operations. In addition to these two designs, there are also other configurations, including ones that have literal beams being in the middle of the bridge itself, which I, I don't I don't know what the 24th century designers decided to do. I guess they were just like, screw it, let's let's throw anything we can. Unfortunately, we don't get a lot of info on the variants, so there's not a lot I can tell you about them. Yellow alert. Status? Yellow alert. All automates ready and functioning. Automatic moorings retracted. All speeds available through transwarp drive. <laughs> Speaking of something that was built with efficiency in mind in the 23rd century and bastardized in the 24th, the Excelsior Bridge, especially the original, was designed with military efficiency in mind. In the middle of the bridge is the, wait for it, captain's chair. Like the Constitution and Miranda, the chair does have command and control functionality. To the aft of the chair is the engineering master systems display and console, and in front of the bridge would be both the navigation system and con. While we don't know where all of the other systems are, apparently hearts are very popular on the display screens. And again, it's never stated, but it appears that both tactical and science were to the right of the captain from what I can tell. Unlike in all other designs, behind the chair and next to the turbo lift would be the various alerts and states that the ship is in. So not only would you hear yellow alert, but you could see it by just looking up. The Excelsior's only major design that we don't see anywhere else ever, save maybe for the Freedom class, was to also have safety restraints. Another interesting thing to note about the Excelsior though was that it's the military equivalent of the Oberth in that it was used as a test bed. Transwarp, which unfortunately was never spoken in the movies and I wish they had added that because it doesn't make a lot of sense in the scenes where you see Kirk and that other captain, was utilized on the vessel along with other types of experimental technology. Future variants of the Excelsior Bridge begin to feel more like a cross between the Constitution and the Galaxy class, with the hard edges of the consoles being smoothed and rounded and putting everything closer together. The bulkheads would still be lined with various stations, and interestingly, the captain's chair, along with the con and nav, would be elevated with stairs leading up to them. Speaking of elevations, this leads us to that of the Prometheus. They're Starfleet. What are they doing? Firing on us! They must think Romulans are on board! They're right! To understand the bridge, I think we have to look at the reasoning for the creation of the ship. During the war with the Dominion, Starfleet found itself with a severe man shortage problem. The necessity for vessels to be able to work with less crews was vital for the Federation to survive. The ship, in theory, could be controlled by only four Starfleet officers. This would allow for streamlining of the various operations. The captain's chair is set in the middle, the chair having the common ability to swivel, like most all others, and would also have command and control abilities. The swivel ability would also allow the captain to see all of the various consoles to know what is going on. Directly in front of the captain's chair is both helm and con sunken into the floor itself, which is an interesting choice. The con station would also have the ability to activate the ship's multi-vector assault mode. The vessel would have tactical and additional operation stations behind the captain's chair, both to the aft and the port. Given the military aspect of the vessel, there would be more consoles that would be able to do whatever is necessary on the bridge itself. These consoles could be configured for engineering or a secondary tactical or whatever you needed. On that note, to the aft of the captain would be where the main engineering console is. While an interesting layout, the sunken nature of both helm and con is weird. And honestly, when I look at it, without seatbelts, I could see the captain lurching forward and face planning into one of the other officers. It seems much more likely than other designs. While I will admit this is very efficient, I'm not sure it's the best way to go about making a bridge for a vessel that's meant for war. 
Today to put Starfleet frequency 1486 on audio. Aye, sir. Looking at a design that would be a cross between the Prometheus and the Intrepid is that of the Sovereign. The bridge, while extremely expansive for what's really necessary, has the captain's chair in the middle, again with the same command and control abilities as I continue to talk about. Both Khan and Helm are, wait for it, directly in front of the captain. The one thing I do like about these two stations are that they are expanded to be more cubicle-like. As I've stated, this would allow officers to do their jobs a lot better. To the immediate right and left of the captain's chair would be a place for the executive officer and a third officer. Originally, I discussed how it made little sense for the third chair to be specifically for a counselor. A common counter that came up was that the third seat is for a diplomatic officer or someone who was vital to the mission. I stand corrected and that makes a lot more sense. Both of these chairs would presumably have command and control layouts as well. To the left of the captain is a specific cubicle for science and another station that allows a tactical officer to stand. Because if we're going to have tactical consoles, by God, the officer better be standing. The walls are also lined with various stations as well. The Sovereign is configured with stairs that show multiple levels where people can both walk up and down to the various stations. This, again, looks really cool, especially with that cool indirect blue lighting, but when the ship is in combat, it seems like this would be a major liability. The other thing I will say is that, unlike most other layouts, this design, like that of the Excelsior, seems to be geared towards having every console and substation available for use, making this possibly one of the best bridges that I've seen. Speaking of things that are similar, the Luna class bridge layout is the merging of the Sovereign class with the fill of the galaxy. The consoles are styled after the Sovereign with the emplacement like that of the galaxy. Operations and con are in front with the captain's chair directly behind them. The captain is flanked by his executive officer's chair and that of his baby mama. Behind him would be tactical as well as engineering and science consoles. The sides of the bridge would not have any terminals, but in front of everyone would be the view screen like that of the Sovereign. Now, to be honest, one of the reasons that I did not include the California class bridge is because basically it's the galaxy class bridge. There are minor changes, but we see the same issues that we saw with that one. The tactical officer is always standing. Even if some suggest that he has a chair, we never see it. The panels behind tactical would be able to control science engineering and other operations. And in front of the captain's chair is both con and navigation with the view screen. I really can't write or say more words to make this longer. It's a freaking galaxy class bridge just enjoy it. The last bridge we'll be breaking down is that of the Nova class. I saved this one for last because it has the least amount of information. Styled after the Intrepid, the Nova bridge is somewhat smaller than what we've seen before. The captain's chair would be right of center with the executive officer's chair left of center. A panel for information for both of them to access the other ship's systems would be available as well. In front of the captain's chair is the dual con ops console that we've seen before with tactical engineering and science directly behind the captain's chair. The view screen would be, wait for it, directly in front. The Nova was built for exploration and the bridge does seem to reflect this somewhat. The focus is on the captain and getting information to them without really a concern for combat. While I have noted it before, there has been a lot of discussion given over how large the bridges are, as well as the fact that the consoles literally explode and molten core rocks eject from them. There are a few pieces to this. First, the style of bridge that is created by the Federation may be that they just create them larger, that it's a unique aspect of the designs. Many will say this is for camera work, and they aren't wrong, but there are ways to get around that. The bridges could be more compact and look just as nice and get the same camera angles. Hell, The Expanse, Battlestar Galactica, and Babylon 5 do it, so I have to believe that the writers and designers chose to do it this way on purpose. And because they did that, I'm going to take it at face value. I do believe that this is just an aspect of Federation design. As for the console destruction and killing of people, while I do think it's fair to ask why they don't have surge protectors or some kind of switches that flip when too much power occurs, it's possible that power that goes through the systems is just too vast that no surge protector would save someone. It's possible that they have switches or some kind of safety mechanism, but when you're looking at a warp core and what it can generate, there's just nothing that can be 
be done. As for the rocks, I did hear some explanations that they're not rocks, but materials inside of the consoles that will generally be pliant, but when struck with such magnitude of electricity, are hardened as not to catch fire. Which doesn't seem to work out that well, because we see fires on Starfleet bridges a lot, but it is possible. Personally, I think that they are just rocks and they're placed there because of union quotas that the Communistic Federation would require, but that's just me. At the end of the day, what are your guys' thoughts? Are these layouts still pretty lethal? Would a breakdown of alien bridges be something you want to see? Let me know in the comments below and remember, all of our lives are a story. Make yours a good one.